tonight indeed you are exalted above the heavens and above the earth there is none like you there is none to be compared with you you are the same yesterday today and forever and we thank you tonight because you have gathered us in this place to experience and to see your signs and your wonders and lord i pray that no life will leave this place the same touch us transform us let the sinners be saved let the oppressed be delivered let yokes be broken let there be miracles in this place let the sick be healed and let your name be glorified in Jesus great name hallelujah are we ready for tonight please don't be distracted just focus on God and focus on what's happening here amen and please ushers handle them with care okay I want us to pray two prayers before we sit down do we believe in prayers here I don't know about you but I know a God that answers prayers I don't use charm. My charm is prayers. The Bible says, O thou that hears prayers, unto thee shall all flesh. If all flesh can boldly come to him because he hears their prayers, how much more you a child of God? How much more you a son of the kingdom? He said, Hitherto have you not asked, ask and receive that your joy may be full. Ezekiel 37 verse 9 we are going to pray two prayers and then we will sit down and oh God is going to do amazing things tonight in the name of Jesus some of you that came here without any expectation you will go back with a basket of miracles God is going to surprise somebody here And anyone whose destiny has been pegged at a spot for a long time, you are breaking out and breaking forth. I said you are breaking out and breaking forth tonight. In the name of Jesus. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the to breath, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath 
and breathe on these slain that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath, and breath came up into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Say after me, O Lord God, breathe life upon every dead situation in my life. Let's say it again, O Lord God, breathe life upon every dead situation in my life today in the name of Jesus turn it to prayer turn it to prayer raise your voice and cry to heaven breathe life upon every death situation everything that seems dead breathe your life the breath that you breathed in the nostrils of man in the garden of Eden breathe life again breathe life again breathe life again hallelujah you have won me Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Breathe life over my finances, over my health, over my body, over my spirit, over my mind, over my family, over my marriage. Breathe life. Breathe life. Let that peace come back to life. Let there be a resurrection. For I am the resurrection and the life. Arabako Sarabaha Terebokos. Esorobo Siaba. Sebaraha Dalahabi. Sorobo Siaba. Hallelujah. Please take advantage of the prayer sessions because as you pray, the angels of the Lord are stationed to bring instant visitation over your life. How many of you believe that? Shall they big amen to that? Everything that has been dead in your life before now is coming back to life. Every dead situation is receiving resurrection this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 60 verse 11. Isaiah 60 verse 11. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. If God is saying they must be open, that means they have been shut before now. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that some people may not know that their gates, the gates of their destiny has been shut. When we talk about the gates of your destiny, we are talking about the access points into your life. The points whereby God can send his messengers of favor for your lifting, for your establishment, for your progress. If you are here in this service and your life has been around one spot, 
it means that the gates of your destiny has been shut and this evening they will open up Amen. i said they will open up this Amen. evening he said therefore your gates shall be opened continually they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to abaraka sutakamai i feel the anointing now that men may bring to you the wealth of the gentiles and their kings in procession the wealth of the gentiles come to bring you into abundance and the kings come to lift you to a place of greatness are you hearing what i'm saying yes, say after me my father. my father say my father my father, my father, my father. Tonight, tonight let the gates, let the gates of, my of my destiny open up, open up for, greater for greater exploits for greater possibilities Say it again. Let the gates, Let the gates of, my of my destiny shout open up. Open up. Shout it again. Open up. open up. Shout it for the last time. Open up. Open up. Now lift your voice and turn it to a prayer. Open up. Open up. Open up. Rabaka Kwanta Kabansha Ikaboroko Siakata Zesuanta Kabantaka Rabaka Kwanta Can you lift your voice and pray? Can you talk to your father? Can you cry to your neighbor? Something was shit. Let the gates of my destiny open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Every closed door, every closed gate, break open now, break open now. Hey. Last scripture, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19. Something is changing in your life already. How many of you believe that? There's a fresh anointing that will come upon somebody today. This is that service where you are living 10 times better than your king. You sound like you don't believe. You sound like God is going to borrow his power to touch you. The last prayer we are going to pray is for speed. Every spirit of stagnation in your life will be crushed today. That's it. I'm already prophesying. Every spirit of stagnation in your life, in your family, we crush it forever. We bury it forever. He said, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. A deer is a very fast animal. Listen carefully. A deer is a very fast animal. So fast that one of the defense instincts of the deer, when it's running away from the predator, is speed. Such that if the predator does not mark the deer very well, 
he can lose the gear and the bible says that the lord god will make my feet like a deer's feet in other words he's about to give you speed i don't know who i'm talking to this evening perhaps from january till now you have been on one spot in your spiritual life you have been rotating around a cycle but this evening god is giving you speed the one who is called the breaker the one that has the key of david is giving you speed is giving you speed is giving you speed the next part he say and he will make me walk on my high heels in other words catch up and overtake those who have gone ahead of you then after that i will lift you didn't he say that they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength they waited on the lord while others were running ahead at a point in their life they had no explanations for why they were where they were people had mocked them and said where is your god but when god visited them like he's visiting somebody today the bible says they shall renew their strength he said then they shall mount up with wings as eagle in other words when you have been delayed for long you can't walk or run like others you need to fly that's the first thing that will happen you know in the purification of water especially those of you that like bottled water there's something they call reverse osmosis and it's the technology they use to purify water i know many of you may not know it but just listening is okay when you get to heaven study chemistry amen there's something they call reverse osmosis is the technology they use in purifying water now osmosis is when water molecules move from a smaller concentration to a higher concentration using a permeable you know substance so if they say reverse osmosis it means that it is moving from a higher place why so that the deaths and the germs which are larger in size and of greater molecule will move out and leave the water now why i use that definitely why that you i use that you know illustration is because god's process is always a reverse osmosis as a human being you need to crawl first then start learning how to walk and then you walk and then after walking you run but don't think about flying but when it is time for god to lift you when it is time for you to catch up god said you will jump all the steps and fly first he said they shall mount up with wings as eagles while your mates are on the ground you are on the air then when you have flown and overtaken them he said that's when you come down and run and not be weary and then walk and not fail who am i talking to this evening god is about to give you speed like you have never imagined some of you will collide with a new anointing this night i want you to raise your voice in two minutes and say father give me speed today today as a part of my miracle for being in this service add speed to my life add speed to my destiny open your mouth and pray are you praying at all? Those following a life for whatever nation. The Lord shall make my feet like a breed of the dwarf. And the hand of God came upon Elijah. And he did at his loins. And I'll drown the chariots of Hey. 
the meeting tonight with impartations there are people that came in for this meeting and all you desire or all that you will need is a fresh impartation of the glory upon your life a fresh touch a fresh anointing so that you can make notable progress in the things of the spirit and this is your moment this is your time can you lift your hands, everybody? The Lamb. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. As we lift our hands before you as a token of our love holy oh holy oh now there are 18 people here all eyes closed just lift your hands there are 18 people it may be more, but they are just 18 people. And God wants to release upon you a weight of His glory. He wants to release upon you a heavy dose of His presence. And He wants to bring you to a higher dimension of the Spirit. Where you have been operating for long is not where God wants you to be. 18 of you, He's calling you to come up hither I see an angel of the Lord standing by my right hand side he has fire all over his body and he's going to put that fire upon the 18 of them please lift your hands eyes closed father as I move my right hand all across this room from the front to the back from the left to the right let your angel touch those 18 people now a fresh touch of your glory a fresh touch of your glory as i count to 18 let it drop let it drop let it drop mantles of fire step into a higher dimension in the spirit one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, all over this place, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, touch, seventeen, eighteen. Let that fire rest upon you. You are stepping into a new dimension of the spirit. Tongues of fire. I see it resting upon people now. Tongues of fire. I see it resting upon people. 
He said, and they shall speak with new tongues. Ratos kapranda praskiba zala prate kabusia tana farande sutorogobosia. Let the dimensions that is due your life this time be open for you. Let the vistas of the heavens be open over your life. Let spiritual senses be activated. Step into a higher dimension now. Step into a higher measure of grace. Step into grace. You are the Lamb. Upon. You are the Lamb. Upon. You are the Lamb. Upon. Ima Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Sing for me. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Dave, get the mic and sing, please. Your name is God. Emmanuel. That presence is here. That glory is here. That glory is here. Please lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to do this now. I want to pray a prayer of deliverance. Yesterday, the Lord showed me a vision. Just pay attention, except those under the anointing. Yesterday, the Lord showed me a vision in prayer. And I saw people held at a spot with chains. And all of a sudden, there was an explosion, like a bomb blast. And the chains fell off. And the people broke into speed. They began to run away. They began to run. And God said, go and end captivity in the life of my people. Lift your hands. I feel that anointing now. Father, in the name of this above every other name, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. Any family represented here, any individual that is here, that has been held captive by any spirit, by any curse, by any yoke, by any reproach and their lives have been pegged at the spot as they shout the name jesus let those chains be broken let families be released let destinies be released at the count of three shout the name jesus one two three shout jesus be released now! 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 Aparakata! Sheko parakata kasiakata! Let those chains break! Let those chains break! Let those chains break! You are going to shout that name again at the top of your voice. God is bringing an end to delay. Delay, delay. Every spirit of delay, I arrest you right now. Every altar of delay, every altar of stagnation, every altar of retrogression over families, over individuals, under the sound of my voice, as they lift up the shout of Jesus, let those altars be destroyed. Let those spirits be arrested. Let the yoke of delay be broken. At the count of three, shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Hold on. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hold your hands, everybody. God just gave me direction. Just hold hands, everybody. 
When I count three, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Every spirit that has kept you pegged up at a spot for long, your family has been tied, your resources tied, your finances tied, everything around your life, the only thing making progress in your life is your age. This night it is coming to an end. By the end of this night, you will leave this place with an evidence of the power of God that has shown up in your life for good. Father, as they shout that shout, let the spirits of delay be arrested. Spirits of stagnation be arrested. Spirits of reproach be arrested. Spirits of retrogression be arrested. I come by the role of a higher priesthood and I challenge the altars of darkness. I declare this night is your deliverance. At the count of three, let them be free. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. I arrest those spirits. I break the chains. I break the chains. Let that yoke be broken. Who is like the lion and the lamb seated on the throne? Mountains bow down and the oceans roll to the Lord of hosts. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yahweh, Yahweh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Those chains are breaking. Those chains are breaking. Hey, Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Please leave your neighbor. Let's do something quick. I feel the power of God here. The miracle service has started. It has started. Just leave your neighbor. Listen to me. I'm going to make a decree now. God is showing me a vision. I'll make a decree now. And you are going to shout fire seven times. Is it seven times? Yes, you shout fire seven times. Just follow me. This is how the Spirit leads us, okay? Listen to me. I'm seeing something like a cloth. That's what God showed me in a vision. I saw it like a cloth. And I saw it hanging on the faces of people. And when it is hung on people's faces, it becomes black. And God said that is the garment of shame and reproach. But did he not say that I will give you beauty for ashes? the oil of joy for morning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness this night there will be an exchange this night this time every garment of reproach and shame that the devil has given to you there's going to be an exchange this night father i take authority over that that garment I command that as they shout fire, let those garments be destroyed. Whether they are territorial or ancestral, whether they have been in the bloodline, garments of shame and reproach, hanging over families, hanging over destinies, hanging over careers, hanging over ministries. I command by the fire from the throne room, let them be destroyed. 
you are going to shout fire seven times as I give you the signal. Number one, shout fire. Number two, shout fire. Number three, shout it again. Number four, five, six, seven. We destroy now. We destroy now. We destroy. Katoka barakata. Sam prakata prakete kapa. And prakete kapa yata. Sam prakata ka. Let those garments be rolled away. Be destroyed by fire. Kakasunanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nagi Baba Sunanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nagi Baba Sunanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nagi Baba Sunanka Ubangi Chika Isayabo Nagi Baba Please put your right hand on your head. I want to pray two prayers and the anointing will fall on people here. And after today, things will begin to happen so fast in your life. You will wonder where they were before now. Just put your right hand on your forehead. The anointing is coming on people now. He said, but my horn has thou exalted as the horn of a unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Two prayers in one. Number one, anything that has made your horn, your horn is your influence. Your horn is your identity in the spirit. Anything that has brought down your identity or your influence by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I declare that your horn is exalted tonight. I declare that your horn is exalted tonight. He said, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The oil that is needed for the new season of your life. I declare, let a double portion rest upon your head. As your hands are on your head, I declare, let a double portion rest upon your head. I call for the double portion on your head. Let it rest upon your head now. In the name of Jesus. Father, as you ask me to declare, I prophesy over the destinies of everyone represented. You know what the Holy Spirit just told me? He said, you are here both for yourself and your family members, wherever they are on the earth. Whatever happens to you here is happening to them, wherever they are. As long as they are on planet earth, the shift that is happening in your life now is happening to them where they are. Some of you will have them begin to call you even before the service is over. You will begin to get calls and text messages from them. There is going to be a shift dramatically. Put your right hand on your forehead there. I want to pray for the mantle of speed to come on at least 21 people. I want to pray for that mantle of speed. The Bible says, And the hand of God came upon Elijah, and he guided his loins, and outran the chariots of Ahab. Father, at least 21 people here, but I pray generally for all your children by the role of the apostolic and the prophetic. I declare, let the mantle for speed rest upon your life. Let the grace for speed come upon your life. Receive speed now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jehovah, 
Up there, please. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. I arrest and I destroy everything that has crippled and compromised your destiny. Everything that has sabotaged your efforts. You are hard working. You have done everything you can. You have prayed. You have fasted. But every spirit that has made a setback to your efforts, I arrest those spirits right now. Hey, Kaya. I set the fire of God to your roots, to your father's house and to your mother's house. Let those spirits be arrested. Let them be arrested. Let them be arrested. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. I just heard a shout from my left ear around this side. I just heard, I just, the anointing is going to come on somebody. I just heard a shout. And it's a shout of deliverance. That family is breaking free and breaking forth. And I want to declare on the strength of that. Please, when you find a person, bring that person for me. But on the strength of that word, I declare every family that has been pegged at this spot when god sent moses to egypt he sent him with a rod i declare by the rod of the prophetic and the apostolic i shift you to your place in destiny i shift you to your place in destiny I shift you to your place in destiny. I shift you to your place in destiny. No more limitations. Did you get the person? I heard the shout. No more limitation. No more limitation. Anyone who is here and you struggle in prayer it seems as though there is a spiritual blockage from hell sabotaging all your spiritual efforts you fast and that's when you get more attacks you pray and you don't see any result you find it difficult to break through there are at least seven of you here but i stand in the name of him that raised christ from the dead in the name of he that had the key of david I declare, let that dark cloud of the enemy be rolled away from your life. By the wind of the Holy Ghost, let that dark cloud of hell be rolled away. I declare a breakthrough for you now. A breakthrough for you now. A breakthrough for you now. To that effect, there are about at least seven to eight intercessors that God is going to anoint now. And He will anoint them in ten seconds. There are seven to eight of them that begin to prophesy. An anointing is coming upon you to begin to travel and to bring forth in the place of prayer. And through your prayers, families will be des delivered. Destinies will experience transformation. Even your life will be implicated by your prayers. Aparando skuta prakatanga skaya, vali vata katonga, bengo veno tea, risombra kata. I declare, let that grace come upon those eight intercessors. Help them, please. Help them. Let it rest upon you, the grace to travel and to bring forth in the place of prayer. Take that grace now. Take that place now. Take that option now. You are glorious, so glorious in your name. brata brata marosa. Reske prekete baka, vakande kamo, matamo rambo sombre mo,
Please, is there a name like Abigail? Abigail. Is there a name like that? Abigail. I'm seeing someone who is not too tall. Abigail. Huh? Abigail. If what I'm seeing is correct, it's only one person that the Lord showed me. Come, I'm going to do something. This protocol, just wait. Come. I'm going to do something prophetic. Alright? God is saying... No, just leave her. Just leave her there. Stand there. Stand there, Abigail. Are you Abigail? Look at me. Just look at me from there. Look at me. Look at me. Just look straight into my eye. Something is entering into your family through you. And there's a shift coming in your destiny. There's a turnaround that the Lord is doing. And I declare, receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus. God is saying I should wipe your face. Okay? Are you hearing me? No, I don't need the mic. God is saying I should wipe your face. And he's saying from that, he's bringing an end to shame and reproach. And he's wiping the tears of your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, Father, let this be like a mantle. Let there be a release of grace. Wipe the tears of this family. And bring them into their God-ordained season. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning. Let's worship the Lord for a moment. You are fairer, you are fairer, more fairer than the You are precious. More precious than gold. Lift your hands, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Oh, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning sun. You are fair. The sweetest name I know. Can you worship with me just a moment? He's always just the same. Oh, praise His holy name. That is why. the strings now. Emmanuel Your name is called Your name is called 
sick this is your moment if you are sick in your body the healing power of Jesus is here to touch you to make you completely whole I sense that presence now Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 the scripture declares that when the evening had come they brought to him those who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirit with a word and he healed all their sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah surely he has borne for he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses Whatever sickness you came here tonight, the Lord is about to touch you. Jesus died 2,022 years ago. And when he hung at that cross, he took all the affliction of mankind on himself. And henceforth you are not permitted to go on through life with sickness. All you have to do is surrender in faith and receive his touch. And he will heal you where you are if you are standing in for somebody you can take your phone call them where they are and leave the phone running we are going to pray right now if you can if you have a loved one that is sick somewhere maybe in the hospital or at home or far away in another state or another nation if you can take your phone call them right now we are going to pray if you are sick and you are here tonight just put your hand your right hand where the condition is put your right hand where the condition is if anybody's paralyzed or crippled in their feet put your two hands there God is going to touch you right now if it is a blood condition or is in a private area of your body just put your right hand on your chest please obey the instructions clearly so that God can touch you if you are standing in for a loved one you can take your phone call them right now 
and leave the phone running and I'll pray. Even if the call ends before the end of the prayer, as long as you call them and the sound of my voice got to their end, they will be healed. How many of you believe that? If you are sick, put your right hand where the sickness is. If you have a problem with your feet, maybe you are paralyzed or you are crippled and you are under the sound of my voice online or on ground, get someone to put their two hands on your two legs. If it's an eye condition, put your two of your fingers on your eyes. If it's your ears, put your two index finger on your ears. If it is your, a blood condition or in a sensitive area of your body, for social reasons, just put your right hand on your chest. I'm going to pray now. If we have followed the instructions carefully, then I'm going to pray. Thank you, Father. He touched me. He touched me. And know the joy that fills my soul. Something happened and I pray now are the phones on I'm about to pray now father we thank you because you have given us a name that is higher than every other name and at that name Jesus cancer will bow affliction will bow sickness of any kind will bow for God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the name Jesus every knee shall bow therefore I stand by the authority in that name and I come against the spirit of affliction I come against the spirit of infirmity I come against the spirit of paralysis the spirit of deformity crippling spirits spirits of any kind behind any affliction I curse you by the name of Jesus and I command you to leave their bodies right now I command you to leave their bodies right now. I command you to leave their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus. Every arrow of affliction from hell, I command it return to the sender. Return back to where you were sent from. In the name of Jesus. Every kind of demonic transfusion that came into your body by a dream or by a vision. You had a dream, someone met you and then something happened and from that time an affliction will not just go. I curse that spirit now. I command them to live your life now. In the name of Jesus. I command swelling of any kind be you now every form of swelling or boils be healed now in the name of jesus let's start with the difficult cases this night any form of tumor fibroid cancer lump of any kind i curse those devils now i command them to dry up now fibroid be gone now be gone now in the name of Jesus I'm praying it again any form of multiple fibroid I release the fire of God to melt them now melt them now melt them now melt them now in the name of Jesus be healed in your bloodstreams be healed in your organs be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Any condition with your head, be healed now. In the name of Jesus. 
any form of eye condition i cause those blinding spirits now i cause those blindly spirits now and i command healing to the eyes in the name of jesus any condition with the ear be healed now ears open now ears open now in the name of jesus respiratory conditions be healed right now i don't know but i'm praying this any condition with your tongue your tongue any condition whatsoever whether an impediment of speech or an unnecessary affliction i declare be healed instantly let that tongue be loose be loose in the name of jesus i lose in every stammering tongue i'm praying it again i lose in every stammering tongue be loose now in the name of jesus there's somebody who feel like heat going through their chest right now and i'm using that to pray against every heart condition lung condition any condition around your chest let the healing power of god bring relief to you right now let the healing power of god bring relief to you right now be touched by the power of god in the name of jesus i command urinary infections to be healed right now i speak to kidneys every dead kidney come alive now every dead kidney come alive now I declare tonight is the end to that dialysis right now I speak to you wherever you are under the sound of my voice even if you are with those machines right now I command the life of God to your kidneys now afflictions with your urinary tract be healed now in the name of Jesus every infertile affliction I declare instant miracles now be healed right now in the name of Jesus low spam count be corrected now any form of blockage within your reproductive system as a woman I declare let it be a breakthrough let it be a relief right now in the name of Jesus pains of any kind be healed now be healed now paralysis go in the name of jesus crippling spirits go in the name of jesus and if you have not used your leg for a long time i command strength to those legs 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 let every form of deformity be corrected now and when i mention your condition or not I declare under this atmosphere of miracles be healed in jesus name come on shout that amen two times two can you wave your hands and give the lord praise we serve an awesome god Now you can check yourself those of you that made the phone call call them again ask them what's the condition wait there are about two healings that just happened online i just saw it right now you will get you'll get the information if you are following online please you can get us through our pr line or through any of the social media and do as possible send your healing requests but i just saw at least two healings at least two healings that happened online god will confirm his word there's a lady that i see god flushing something out of your body there's been an issue around your urinary tract but i see god flushing it out right now and you are going to feel like urinating now you are going to feel like urinating in the next within the next 
100 seconds you are going to feel like urinating something is leaving you that infection is going forever you are feeling it now in yourself you are feeling it right now in yourself that there is a relief so go check yourself and let's get the testimony if God has touched you and you are healed wherever you are please march to the front quickly let's get your testimonies it is important that your testimonies are shared so that the healing can be permanent and so that we can bring shame to the devil we can all sit down those that are healed you can check yourself and please rush to the front don't wait for you to be the last don't wait for someone to go first if God has healed you whatever the condition is please walk, walk to the front quickly let's get your testimonies they are coming can we celebrate them Those online, please send your reports, send your testimony reports. If you call someone, call again and find out if they are healed. Please get us the testimony quickly. see the Lord untying and releasing the financial destinies of families here I see the Lord releasing finances for families old money is being released old money money that has been owed you is being released money that is rightfully yours and was denied you or was withheld is being released thank you father lord i ask that you confirm that word i'm asking you confirm that word by giving us testimony of miracle alerts here 
I ask you, just do it so that they will know that this is a season of abundance. Thank you, Jesus. Can you wave your hands and give the Lord praise? God is awesome tonight. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hold on. Let me get the testimonies. Let me get for yes, say it, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. This is uh, Bro John Bola. Okay. Healed of neck pain for over a year now. Over a year. Yes, he went to the hospital. Neck pain. And he was diagnosed of spinal spondylosis. You were diagnosed of what? Spinal spondylosis. Spinal That's spondylosis. That yes. means your spine is bent. Yeah. Yes, sir. How are you feeling now, sir? Feeling better. Completely gone. Completely. Completely. I declare, just stretch your hands towards me, sir. Just stay there. No, no, don't worry. Just stay. Just stay. Just stretch your hands. Stretch your two hands. Say after me, I receive. Say it again, I receive. Now, Father, I declare that this healing is permanent. And let everything that the devil has taken from your life be restored in the name of Jesus. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. I arrest those spirits and I declare that you are free. In Jesus' name. Who is worthy to be praised and adore? Then I don't say so. Can go back to your seat. Yeah, yes, that's not the only testimony. Oh, okay, yes. As we pray, he touched his daughter who was having cerebral palsy. So he now confirmed that she's relieved of the condition. Where, where is she? Sir, when you are ministering, yes. you're, you're doing the ministration. Yes. I was touched by the spirit. Yes. Almost three times the whole prayers. I was yes. on the ground. Yeah. When one of the emotions people down to the seat, now spirit come to me that my daughter has been suffering from cerebral palsy for three years that she will hold her legs and she thought the moment I held the leg yes. I was shaking, I felt that but I knew the spirit said that I should still hold her cerebral legs. palsy, Yes. is that the daughter? Yes. bring her, let me see cerebral palsy, for how long? Yes. three years yes. This is how you celebrate Jesus when you see that kind of thing. Come. She was born like this. Come, sir. This is your, your daughter. You please come. She was born like this. Cerebral pras. Yes, sir. Uh, who is, what is it? Do we have a doctor? Can you explain for them what cerebral palsy is? Yes, sir. Is a, a dysfunctional part of the brain. Okay. Yes, cerebrum. That's dysfunctional. Okay. More of like paraspatial paralysis. The brain cannot function the way it should. And that's how it will be for the person. Yes, that's how it should be. Sometimes the person might be like an imbecile. The Except by divine like intervention. Amen. She was born like this. Yes. She she couldn't talk. Yes. But when we came here, the first time we were here, I can't remember the date exactly. Um, she began to oh, the, the only word she could say was daddy and okay. then my sister's name okay. but she calls me by name now she calls you by name? yes ok, talk to her, let her talk back put the mic close to the baby talk to her, let her talk back <laughs> huh? tell her to say something say or she's shy He's shy. Come with her. Let me pray. God is going to perfect the healing. But you heard her. She said that she called her. She called you your name now. 
here. Okay. Yes, she calls me by name. That was two months ago. Yes. But and now, there are certain words she could, she can she say. She began me. to pronounce. So yes, the healing sir. started two months ago. Yes, sir. And this now in this service, what happened? When yes. you were, me say, I was touched by that. I felt that like three. I think the oceans can testify. Something come to me. The, she, the mom was holding her when I was still younger. When I held, no, something okay. said, I, the spirit said, I should hold the first one, I should hold her. Like when I hold, yes. I now, saying, did she come say come anything I after the prayer? prayer? Okay, come forward. Let me pray for her. God is going to perfect this. Can you stretch your hands towards her? Pray in the spirit if you can. We rebuke cerebral palsy. We declare creative miracle right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare creative miracle right now. Help, help the mother, please. We let that brain be corrected. Let the brain be corrected right now. We're losing her speech. We're losing her speech. Out of her now. And we declare healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I lay my hands on this family. Let this be a new season for them. By the power of the anointing, let this be a new season. A total change and a turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Whatever was stolen is restored. In Jesus' name. Amen. That when, when she's up, you can get them to the seat. Check her. All through this week, check her. Her speech will become perfect. Okay? It will gradually become perfect. I don't know about you, but I believe in miracles. Are you hearing me? I believe that God is able to do impossible things. Night of Wonders is going to be an amazing time. Just maybe, maybe Brother Timothy was right. Maybe the dead will be raised. Yes. Amen. Let the heathens know that our God is great. Can we put our hands together and give the Lord praise? Yes. Yes, sir. This is Sister Tarbia Philibus. Our usher. Healed of back pain since back. 2005. Back. What? Back pain since 2005. Yes, sir. And you are just sitting down there. Are you just looking like that? Back pain, how long is that? 2005 till now is how long? That's about 17 years. Back pain. And how are you feeling now? Her sister is crying. I'm, I'm feeling better. You're feeling better? Yes. Come, let me lay hands on you. You'll be perfected now. Now that's the sister crying. Let me stop to say this. The Holy Spirit just stopped me to say this. That's the sister crying. As you can see, they are both dressed in ushering uniform. Sometimes your service in the house of God can be a ticket to a miracle. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm just saying it for that person that God has been calling and you have refused to answer God. This could just be what God is aiming at for you. Come, my dear, hold my hands. Father, we declare perfect. I felt the anointing. Perfection in the name of Jesus. You are healed. It's done. Give, give, Lord, give Jesus a big hand of praise. Yes. Yes. Please yes, celebrate God. That's, that's joy. When God does a miracle, what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it I cannot I'm, I'm, I'm in the mood now. Oh, you remember now. I'm in the mood. No, don't worry. Who, who, who went out there? I'm in the mood now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Shogun Omotosho. Yes. Healed of leg pain for over two years. Leg pain. Which leg? Both legs? Your right leg? 
What part of your leg? Your knee. Yes, sir. Were you playing football? Yes, sir. As a result of football. Huh? As a result of football, sir. It it was as a result of football. Yes, sir. Because I just saw you uh, like a flash. I saw you playing ball. I saw like monkey. Is it? They call it monkey pose. Yes, sir. And that's why I said I should ask you. I just saw it like a flash. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. And how are you feeling now? I'm feeling better, sir. Do what you couldn't do before. Let's see. Are you just looking? So I can shout hallelujah, 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 Father, we pray. Come, sir. Are you a student? Hold on. Did you... It's not just because I mentioned football. But did you at any time have a, have a football career? Were you at any time not seeing a football career? Or is it just something you do for leisure? Yes, sir. Sometimes for leisure, but I, I wanted to, but you were nursing. You had a, you had a, you wanted to have a career in football. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Where do you stay originally? Where's your house? My house, like. Like this your house. family? Where? Okay, my family based in Damaturu. In Damaturu. Yes, sir. You believe that God is going to open that door again? hear what I said. Do you want to play football or you want to do something else? Because listen, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing in a short time, I'm seeing an international passport opening. That's what I'm asking you. Is it football you want to play or what do you want to do? And we are going to call it for here and now. Listen, You know a prophet when he speaks. Yesterday I was talking with a woman on phone and we're just gisting. And I asked her about her husband. And while she called the husband to come, I just saw the same vision. I saw an international passport. I said, does your husband have international passport? She said, he just collected it now. I said, he should get ready. He's traveling out of the nation. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, as God is perfecting your healing, I declare that your career as God has ordained is opened. And by the power of the Spirit of God, when the time is right, may the door to foreign nations open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, sir. You are going to be very blessed at a young age. And God is going to use you to bring your people out of lack. Did you hear what I'm saying? God is going to use you to bring your people out of lack. So make sure you serve God and you are faithful. In Jesus' name. Celebrate God. Next testimony. Sir, we have an online testimony here. Yes, sir. Let me hear it. Okay. I was having a sharp pain in my chest since from yesterday's night. Since ever our father ministered, he said, I felt heat like a pain i felt heat all over my chest i had a serious headache as well i came back from church in the morning i had a, i had to sleep i wake up and i'm still having the headache only you yes my head was pounding but after the ministration i received my healing from abuja sister hawa b clap your hands if you are giving god praise for that miracle I said at least two online testimonies. Yes, sir. Let's hear the next person, please. Yeah, sir. This is Precious Garba. This is Precious Garba. All right. Healed of swollen gum. Swollen gum. Yes, since what four days. Of, for four days. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can even see. I can see like the left is protruded. Come. For four days. How was the pain? How it's gone now. it was painful before? Yes, it was painful. How was the pain? I wasn't yeah. even able to eat. You like, couldn't I eat. I find it difficult to eat. Yes, sir. So what were you taking? 
beauty and light things. But God has healed you now. Yes, sir. Father, we declare perfection. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And every dental condition here, the Lord is healing you right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You, sir, the one on glasses. Is that a medicated glass? Huh? Oh, okay. Okay, sit down. I know it was medicated. I wanted to free you from the glass now. Amen. There's an anointing here. There's such an anointing here. Yes, sir. Sir, this is Sister Peace Ishaya. She just received relief from malaria and typhoid. Since last five days. For five days? Yes, sir. And you are healed now. I can see our face mask. It is permanent in the name of Jesus. Can we wave our hands and give the Lord praise? I think you are going to do some praise for us. You are going to dance and praise God. Not now, not now. I mean at the end, okay? And you must sing that song. Obrigado, Caesar. I don't know that. I want that song. Eh? Was, was obrigado, whatever it is. Can you clap your hands and give God praise? Amen. Be seated. Hebrews chapter 11, quickly. In 10 minutes, and we are done tonight. Hebrews chapter 11. Just be seated. Whilst you are under this atmosphere, God is still doing miracles. God is still doing a lot of readjustments. A lot of things are happening right now. A lot of shifts are going on. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 to 3. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Say you are one. God is still healing. Um, I'm seeing the Lord healing typhoid. Typhoid. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's someone you're here, and this is like a friend that you have with the name Veronica. Vera or Veronica, like that. Veronica and the Lord said he is putting upon Veronica a crown of glory he's bringing beauty he's beautifying her destiny and if what I'm seeing is correct I'm seeing someone who is about light skin and has a slim face not very slim but a slim face like Veronica, your friend. You are here and it's your friend called Veronica. God said to prophesy. He's putting a crown of glory upon her. It's a new season for her. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. Somebody say evidence. All that you have seen tonight is called evidence. Somebody say evidence. The evidence of things not Sin, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. So faith is not just a wishful thinking. It's not just a wishful thought. It's not something you can just imagine and say, I have faith. No. Faith is tangible. It can be measured. Remember that one time the disciples prayed to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith. 
even though the Bible never said that God increased their faith anyway. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, I believe in verse 3, that God has dealt to every one of us a measure of faith. So that means that faith is a substance that you can receive. It can grow. Everything that we have made available for us in the kingdom is available in Christ Jesus by grace. But is accessible by faith. It is available by grace, but it is accessible by faith. So it is with faith that you can lay hold of the things that God has in stock for you. It is important that you believe and understand that there is nothing you ask God for now that God is going to do now. Everything that you need God to do for you, He has already done. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and in verse 3 that He has given to us all things that pertains to life and godliness god is not in the business of creating your miracle no your miracle is a done deal it is a finished work it is a past tense it was achieved in christ jesus even before you were born when jesus died on the cross he said it is finished so everything that we will enjoy that is available to us in the kingdom has been brought to us by grace. But it is when you take hold of faith that you can now enter into the fulfillment of those things. So to you, it is a happening in the present. But to God, it has been concluded. So the scripture says faith is a substance of things hoped for. So a hope is an expectation. If for instance I have an expectation that after this service, Pastor Henry will give me 5,000. I have an expectation. But that expectation alone does not guarantee that he will give me. I need something as a title deed, as a deposit, as a hold, as a guarantee. You know when you go to apply for jobs, there is a space in your CV for what they call them Gar is it guarantors okay referees which one do they do with guarantors when you are taking loan hmm. don't take loan don't don't guarant for anybody you don't know are you hearing what i'm telling you it's not part of my message but don't guarant for anybody you don't know anybody you cannot trust with money don't do guarantor for you are in trouble because when that person eats the money and doesn't pay back if you cry to me i'll quote the scripture for you say amen as I said, amen. Uh -huh. So, I need a guarantee that I will truly get that money from him. That guarantee can come either in form of a word or a promise from him. That he can give me a promise that after this service, I will give you 5,000. And I can hold on to that promise because I know Pastor Harry is a man. I know his credibility. I know he's able, he's capable. 5,000 is but a little thing for him. And on the strength of that promise he has made, I know that he will do what he has said. This is a man. How much more God that created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Titus chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says God cannot lie. That's even stronger. He didn't say God will not lie. If he had said God will not lie, it means that there is a tendency for God to lie. And you see, the reason why many people are considered, or man is considered as a liar, is because sometimes when people promise you, they have the intention of fulfilling their promise. But unforeseen circumstances around them make it difficult or impossible for them to fulfill that promise but not god god is not held back or trapped by circumstances and situation god is what i call an msc somebody say msc you want to know what msc means master over situation and circumstances let me go on god also has what i call phd power over a host of devils this is the God that created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says he cannot. That means it's not part of him. He doesn't have the ability to lie. 
so that's why he doesn't speak too much because anything he says if a human being looks at you and say your head is big that's just his description but if God should open his mouth like the human being and say your head is big your head will truly become big if what you call white is white look at it again after God has called it another name you don't understand what I said if you call this white and God calls it a name after God has called it that name look back you will find out that it's no longer white because he's the God that called those things that are not as though they were so what I'm stressing here is that according to faith faith helps us to understand that everything that we want to receive from God and everything that is ours by redemption are not things that God will do when we ask. No, they are things that He has already done. It is in asking that we enter into the manifestation of the same. You see, by faith we understand that the walls were framed by the Word of God. Now that's the, that's the garanto, that's the faith there. The Word of God was the substance. When He spoke, everything was created according to His Word. So that the Bible says that the things that are seen, Hebrews 11 verse 3, that the things that are seen were not made by the things that are visible. What this means is that everything that you see around you that was created, actually was not created, it was transported. You hear what I said? That's what it says there. That the things which are seen, we are not made of things visible. In other words, God did not use a raw material physically to create trees, to create animals. No. He spoke them into existence. That means that they were existing somewhere. And then by reason of the power of the spoken word, God only transported them from that realm into this realm. So everything that you will enjoy as far as your salvation is concerned, Everything that you will enjoy as far as your redemption is concerned has already been finished, has already been made. It's a done deal. God creates habitats before the habitants. God creates container before putting content. He created the whole earth and made it suitable for you and I to try before he created man. That's why I say, thou preparest a table before me. The table is before you. Do you understand that? Before you doesn't necessarily mean it's in your front. No. Before you means before you got there. He created the table. He saw adversity in your future. He went to that future before you got there. And he created provision in the midst of it. And now he's speaking to you in the present. That I know the thought that I have for you. Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future. So you can look at what seems like affliction. You can look at what seems like obstacles. You can look at what seems like a mountain. And know that when you get there, it will become your stepping stone to a higher level. Somebody say faith. Everything was transported. From another realm into this physical realm. So everything that you will enjoy as a child of God, is it healing? Why struggle with sickness? You know, there's something I call, when someone has suffered affliction for a long time, I call it prolonged affliction. One of the things that will happen to that individual is that he, will be, he or she will become used to the affliction. They can believe that any other thing can happen around their life, but this one, there's nothing that can be done. That's what affliction, prolonged affliction can do. So there are a lot of people who struggle with their, their health. But you don't have to struggle with your health because God paid for your healing more than 2,000 years ago. He's not about to heal you. He has healed you. The Bible says that even before Jesus went to the cross, He healed the sick so that it might be fulfilled that which was written by the prophet that he himself took our infirmities he took in other words everybody that jesus healed before he went to the cross what he was doing was what i call a lay-by now listen to me carefully in south africa in southern africa 
uh, you know we don't have it like that in nigeria here yeah, because when you go to shops in nigeria here yeah, they'll write boldly on their shop no credit today come tomorrow and the shop owner is owing credit the person that brought biscuit cartons for him he has not paid completely and yet he's putting there no credit come tomorrow and you know nigerians are wonderful people that's when they will come put no credit they will come you know nigerians are wonderful people if you put do not urinate here go there and check so if you don't want them to urinate what do you put urinate here then tie one red clothes there <laughs> amen even the dog in that neighborhood will, will know how to bypass so in countries developed countries especially countries in the south southern part of africa there's something they do when you go to a shop and you want to buy a good or you know an item and you don't have the complete money for it the money you have you can drop it as a deposit okay they call it is a system they call it lay by so that money you have dropped tells the shop owner and any other person coming that this item is being paid for so they don't sell it to any other person again until the day you come and complete it now that's exactly what jesus did the reason why jesus could heal people before going to the cross remember it was by his stripes that we were healed but he had not yet died so how come he could heal people yes i know the bible says god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power but i want to show you how that jesus help people to enjoy healing by salvation even before he went to the cross he used what i call the lay-by system so every man that was sick that jesus met and he touched them and said be healed as he touched them or he spoke to them there was an exchange he took their sickness and he gave them their healing in other words i will suffer for this so put it on me when he met the woman with the issue of blood and she touched him she exchanged her condition for the healing that he will purchase on the cross and so she entered into the future in the present jesus had not died but she entered into a healing how is it possible somebody say faith do you understand what i'm telling you so every man that was sick the dead everything that jesus did it was a lay-by that he did that i will go to the cross and pay for it now if those before he died enjoyed so much of the power of god how much more we who are now offsprings of salvation he has died and shed his blood on the cross and by his stripes first peter chapter 2 verse 24 this is how he puts it he say we were healed so we don't have to believe for healing again as though it's in the future it has been done in the past so all you do is by faith you plug on to what was finished on your behalf and then instantly it is updated you know when you they owe you salary for a long time i don't they don't pay you when they want to pay you they'll say backdate it isn't it so they will pay you in full all that they have owed you in the previous level so what we are supposed to enjoy is a backdating of all our benefit in christ jesus that's why the bible says looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith by faith by faith is it prosperity you want to enjoy it is a promise he says if they obey and serve him they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure in deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14 he says i will make you blessed above all peoples listen to what he says and he says that there will be none barren among you not even your livestock so you are not supposed to suffer from barrenness what else tell me what else are you struggling to enjoy protection that the bible not says he will give his angels charge over you to keep you he went in the new testament and repeated it hebrews 1 14 he said are they not all ministry spirit all of them that means all the angels created including the ones that are not guardian angels all of them the bible says they are what ministry spirit so if there is an emergency in your life if the only available angel is in jamaica for instance god will say oh boy go there and rescue whether you are a guardian angel or not they are all ministering spirits 
sent forth to minister for those who are the heirs of salvation that's why when you look at me on the normal day you see me walk tall and relaxed because what you are not seeing is a host of angels following me bring a demon possessed person that's when you will now know they will react it is by faith we enter into all these things I'm telling us this as I round up tonight because if you will ever enjoy a rich walk with God, if you will ever enjoy the anointing, if you will ever enjoy healing, and in fact God doesn't just want divine healing for you, God wants divine health. That's why he says you were healed, healed, healed. But in Isaiah 58 he said then shall your light break forth like the dawn of a morning and your healing speedily when you catch an understanding of that which has been done you will translate from healing to divine health is it protection is it promotion the bible says promotion doesn't come from the west south or east it says but god is the judge he lifts up one and he debases another if you are a child of god when you hear that scripture just start dancing because it is your father in heaven that is the one that lifts men. Is it not just to go around him and say, Alpha, I need to be lifted up. I'm not talking about your physical father that you must buy palm wine or palm oil and go and dance around them a little. No, I'm talking about the father of spirits. That while you are thinking of it in the night and you go to sleep, he's putting pressure on people and saying, how come people have been in this office and you have not promoted this lady? And by the next day you go to the office and you are seeing a drama happening there all at once. The father of spirits. Why send people text message, send me money. When you can talk to the father of spirits. And he can talk to the spirits of men. When he can talk to the spirit of a man and say, pay this man 10,000 every month all through his university days. That's what happened to me when I was in school. I hope you know. From my day one till I finished, there was a couple married couple ministers elderly couple they were, i was on their salary every month including holiday till i graduated <laughs> so you don't need to work before you start getting money abundance is a realm all you need to know is how you can outsource it from that realm and bring it into your life the bible says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ jesus thank god that there are spiritual blessings they are for you they are in heavenly places but you don't need them there you need it here you can't have it there and be broke here yeah. you can't have it there and you are not anointed you can't have it there and you are under affliction you can't have it there and you are under witchcraft oppression you need to know how to outsource it and bring it here. And it is on the platform of faith. So how do I lay hold of all that redemption has made available for me? Four things and I will pray. Very quickly, number one, you must have what I call an accurate understanding and knowledge of the word of God. An accurate understanding. The Bible says in Colossians 1 verse 9 that he will fill you with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Understanding means to comprehend, to get the logic of a system, to know how a system works so that it can work for you. And the Bible speaks of spiritual understanding. That means that this is the kind of understanding that makes you manipulate the realm of the spirit and bring it to your favor. So the next time they delay your promotion, you know which button to press. Yes, so there are buttons you can press. There are keys. Jesus said, I give to you the keys. There are keys. You can change the climate over your life. I'm not telling you stories. I'm not telling you cunningly divine fables. Some of you have been close around me. And you know what I'm talking about. You can know which key to appropriate when you have accurate. The reason why we know the word. But it doesn't work for us. Because we don't have what I call accurate understanding. You need to understand how the system works. A plus B equals to C. How do you stand there and begin to sing and the power of God is moving and touching people and ending captivity in people's life? 
Is it by the singing? No. It's, 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 it's made possible by spiritual understanding. And when you have spiritual understanding, you can open the heavens anywhere. Even if they send you to a desert, you will turn the desert to the Garden of Eden. Then they will come and push you out of there. That's what they did to Isaac. He dug one well, they closed it. He dug another well, they closed it. He dug a... When they saw that any well Isaac dug, water will come out. But the well we dig, we will see sand. They say, okay, go away from us. You are more than us. That's why the Bible says that the righteous shall prosper. He shall flourish like a palm tree. A palm tree is the only tree that can grow and flourish in a desert. It was the psalmist that wrote that. And the psalmist David was from the nation Israel. And the, their geographical context was a desert. So he was using a life picture to paint that scripture for us. That the righteous is like a palm tree in the desert. Any other thing may not grow. But the palm tree stands tall. Rich in its depth, in its roots and its fruits. When you know this kind of things, you will not look for people connection. You will not need to call people. That's where that song comes from. How can I call on your name? And end up in shame. No way. No way. There's a part of the song I like. How can I bow before you, Lord? And bow before a man. No way. No way. For you are my God. You are my God. the jackpot of life oh he says seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added because if you leave god and pursue these other things you need to pursue money pursue relationship pursue can you chase all at a time you end up confused so the almighty formula Seek one, get all free. Or you call it a promo, isn't it? Many of you know that scripture, but you have not given your life to try it, at least for one year. In my life, especially since I started this work, I have never left the purposes of God for my life to pursue material things. Never. I've never gone to a place where they say they are sharing money or food. Even your dream, you have not seen me there. If you see me, I'm the one sharing. Never. Never. We have 500,000 for you. We want to come and give you on Wednesday. Wednesday, please hold it till Thursday. No. No. I found the key. Luke chapter 1 verse 3. Let me show you something. We are, we are going to close now. Luke chapter 1 verse 3. It seemed good to me also. Having, look at it. Look at this now. Having had perfect understanding of all things. This is a realm. Oh. This is a possibility you can get to as a Christian. That you have what the Bible calls perfect understanding. So when it comes to favor, you perfectly understand how to route it into your life. When it comes to the anointing, you know how to route it at any time. When you enter a house where there is oppression, you know what to do and everybody experiences freedom. This is where God wants to get us to. You want to lay hold of all the treasures that God has for you. You want to enjoy eternal life. You want to enjoy a rich walk with God. You want to enjoy those things that have been laid up spiritually for you. Number one, you must have accurate understanding of the word. Number two, you must learn to persevere in prayers. Brothers and sisters, I will not lie to you. But as far as the kingdom is concerned, you can never make notable advancement without the ministry of prayers and intercession. If you did and you didn't pray, someone interceded for you. Now, the bad thing about that is that there is a level you'll get to that that person's intercession, the realm of the spirit will not collect it. 
there is a level you get to where you yourself have to war for it when he brought them out of egypt moses was the one doing everything hit the rock water will come out he hit the rock water came out they needed bread they cried he said pray and i will send bread he sent bread everything moses was doing it even the law moses went up no food for 40 days came down with the law and met them doing another thing when they got close to the promised land god said begin to possess it and contend in battle brothers and sisters and everyone under the sound of my voice we must learn to understand and to engage the place of persevering prayers we must have men and women that are raised up amongst us in these last days that know how to take hold of the horns of the altar and and birth by force the purposes of god there are some things in your life that are like the big bang they are like the jackpot satan knows that if you enter that one you will step into dominion so he can give you everything but he will hold this one from you if you don't learn how to persevere some of you are here there are prophecies words hanging over your life when was the last time you knelt down to groan and bring it into manifestation just because god said it doesn't mean it will manifest in your life god said it from his realm and the realm where he is his word is forever settled where in heaven but in this realm his word is not yet settled he is the lord of the heavens not yet lord of the earth the earth is the lord but he's not lord of the earth yet that's why he says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess will is a future tense that when the church teach principalities and powers the wisdom the manifold wisdom of god when we step into our place of dominion and take territories and nation for the kingdom of heaven that is when every tongue will confess that jesus is what lord until then he's not lord on it there are forces that will resist you brother you are called into a prophetic ministry that is wonderful but I hope you know the day you discover that calling, your warfare started. Mm -hmm. There will be forces that will fight you. There will be forces from your background, your ancestry. They say nobody has ever risen with this light and, and shook nations. So you cannot go anywhere. You need to battle that. The first instruction God told Gideon after telling him, you are a mighty man of value. After all that sweet text message that God sent to him, God came to him in the night and said, Gideon, go and destroy your father's altar first. Before we start anything, deal with that one. And the moment Gideon destroyed that altar, here is how the Bible puts it in Judges chapter 6, to show you that that was the altar that held not only his father's house, but the entire tribe, is it Benjamin he came from? The entire tribe he came from, they were under the shackles and the hold of that altar. The Bible says after that altar was destroyed, all of a sudden the Midianites in their own nation, they began to gather for war. Who told them that their altar has been destroyed? That was because that altar was their spiritual satellite. That was what they used to program demonically the destinies of men from that place. The Bible says in Judges chapter 6 that the Midianites will come during a season of harvest. How they got to know, only God knows. They will come when the Israelites are ready for harvest and ravage the whole land. There are spirits at work in your family that if you don't rise up in the place of prayer, let me tell you something. True faith is demonstrated in prayer. And Elijah was a man of like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that there be no rain. It's just for one man to arise in your family. For generations, men have been sleeping too much. And God is almost in tears because it looks like they are serving God, but they are not seeing any result. And God is saying, I sought for a man who will arise and challenge the altar of Baal. One man has to rise. And if you are under the sound of my voice, you are that person. That will say Satan enough is enough in my family. Oh my God. We must learn to travel. The Bible says as soon as Zion traveled. She brought forth. By the grace of God we are four years doing this work here. If you understand the spiritual atmosphere over this territory. You will know that by now I should have been dead. There are cities where any man of God that rises. A scandal will look for that person. You know them. One man has to rise. 
Some of you need to rise above territorial limitations. God called you in the midst of a land that is filled with darkness. And yet God is giving you a global destiny. You have to break free. You know there are three kinds of darkness. The Bible says the darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2. That's what it says. The darkness. That's how he puts it. The darkness. He didn't just say darkness. The darkness. Isaiah 60 verse 2. The darkness. So it's not just talking about darkness as in mist. It's talking about a force. It's talking about an intelligent demonic system. The darkness shall cover the earth. There are three types of darkness you must fight. If your light must break out and shine. You must fight number one. The darkness of ignorance. Which is the greatest darkness. Nobody has ever done it before. You must fight it. Or you don't even know who you are. You don't know what God has called you to do. Or what God has called you to be. Many of you, what you are suffering from, unknown to you, God has called you to liberate people from that affliction. You say your problem is poverty now. Is it not written? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that through his poverty you might become rich. Somebody has to step up and take hold of that exchange. The darkness of ignorance. The darkness of laziness and complacency. Yes, it's a spirit, I'm telling you. Particularly in northern Nigeria, I've never seen Kai Atala Vashanda. We do respect to all of us in the north and those listening online. It is it's a, it's a natural phenomenon with northerners to be lazy. You go and check how they pray in their church. I say this with grief in my heart. Every day I get tens of messages. Apostle pray for this. Apostle this. Even headache. Apostle. So the weight is just too much. And in my heart I'm saying Lord raise men. Raise men. Mature people. Laziness and complacency. Jonathan the son of Saul one time in the book of 1 Samuel. He prevailed above laziness and he went to the camp of the Philistines. The Bible says at that time only him and his father had weapons. One man entered the camp of the enemy. He said who knows whether God will give us victory. All the other soldiers were lazy there with Saul. He went there and he killed 20. And the Bible says God gave Israel a great victory. Why? Because one man decided to challenge the status quo. You will discover that every time you begin to rise as far as life and destiny is concerned, is as if forces begin to fight you. You know why? Do you know why it's happening like that? You feel, you feel all kinds of opposition and pressure. It's because you are fighting a major darkness called laziness and complacency. God is about to use your life to prove to other people who he gave that assignment to and they failed him that it is possible for a man to do this. Oh, and may God use your life as such example. I say may God use your life as such example. Then the third darkness is witchcraft. So it takes perseverance in prayer to break through. Number three, I said number one, accurate understanding of the word. Number two, perseverance in prayer. Number three, the ministry of the prophetic. It's good to pray, it's good to fast. But there are some doors that will not open to you. They will open to the voice of a prophet over you. There are some men that God has ordained to speak. And the opening of their mouth is the opening of the gates of the destinies of men. Can I tell you something? Ten out of ten times that God spoke through me to people and it came to pass, I was as surprised as them. And let me tell you, sometimes it was a joke. Where is that lady that said her husband went for cause? Where is she? Susanna. Did I tell you that God said? Uh -huh. Sit down. I was just praying and I said, Kai, after marriage, the next thing should be a course. I think I asked you, I said, has it gone for? That's because the prophetic is not only what I see, I tell you. That is the revelatory dimension. There is the creative dimension that I can speak under divine authority and certain blockages can open up for you. 
certain forces that have withstood you can open up there are men that god has anointed like that he puts them in families he puts them in territories he puts them in nations if you see a nation poor and impoverished one of the reasons is because they have neglected those men if you see a family wallowing through pain and hardship it is probably because there is no one the bible says in psalm 78 is it 78 now 74 verses 9 he said we do not see our signs there is no one there is no prophet to tell us how long the affliction will be so people are held under captivity until a prophet speaks this night god will make you a prophet to your family i said god will make you a prophet to your community god will make some of you students a prophet to your students your fellow students your fellow classmates after you write an exam where everybody knows they will fail and then you tell them we will pass allow them to laugh at you it's always good to have the last laugh you understand don't struggle for the first laugh when they finish laughing and they come back and all of them pass then let them give you an honorarium one by one and then finally total obedience i giving you very quickly four keys that will help you activate and bring into manifestation all the benefits of redemption that God has made available for you in Christ. Number one, I said accurate understanding of the word. That's why you must spend time on the word. You must know the word. You know God by knowing the word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Prayer is good, but you know God by knowing his word. The Bible says he honors his word more than his name. The name of God is who he is. The word of God is what he is. Who is God? Or what is God? God is a word. G-O-D, no be word. The words that I speak to you, they are what? And they are what? Oh, that's too deep for you. Okay, let me come back. You know God by knowing his word. Anytime I stand before a case, the first thing that goes through my mind is there a system in scripture that looks like this case once i can find one that devil will leave accurate understanding number two persevering in prayers number three number three is what huh what the ministry of the prophets the ministry of the prophetic it must not be called a prophet but learn to discern the one that God has sent into your life by time. And this night before you leave, I'm going to speak some words over your life that will condition your life and take you to where God wants it to be. Stand on your feet. I want you to lift your hands and say, Father, I thank you for a new season over my life. Thank you for a new season. Thank you because what I have heard and what I've experienced has opened me up to a new season where i will enjoy divine possibilities where i will enjoy the benefits of salvation where i will do exploits are you thanking him thank him thank him thank him thank him thank him in jesus name now all standing everywhere i want to make an altar call before we close for today everybody just stand and be still everywhere please i beg you let's just honor this moment i've spoken about faith i've spoken about what faith can help you get in redemption but everything that i've talked about and everything that we are with we have witnessed can only be a part of the life of a believer can only be a part of the life of a child of god perhaps there is someone here a boy a girl a man or woman you are here or you are following online right now you can hear my voice and you know that regardless of all that you have seen happen here today you know that you are not born again you know that your heart is not truly surrendered to the lord you probably just came for the service or you follow your friends to church but you don't have a personal relationship with god I want to encourage you my friend wherever you are standing right now that that is where it all begins from 
total obedience obedience means doing as you are instructed the bible says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart if you are here and your heart is not to re-surrender to the lord you want to make him the lord of your heart and your life you want to surrender to the lord jesus or perhaps you are here you used to be born again you used to love god you even encouraged people to church you were even serving in the house of god but truly speaking certain things have happened in your life and you really don't know where you are with god your life is now cold no spirit again and you want to be restored back to him you long to be restored to a fellowship with the lord and with the father i want to give you this opportunity wherever you are to just lift your right hand and i will pray with you let this be the crowning of your miracles today you want to say yes to jesus you want to rededicate your life even if you are married even if you are old or you are young you are not ashamed to say lord i know i've missed it but i'm returning to you today i want to start afresh with you i want to enjoy life with you and i want to someday go to heaven and be with you forever raise your right hand wherever you are let me just see you raise your right hand wherever you are if you hear his voice do not harden your heart if the spirit of god is speaking to you right now please unashamedly raise your hand and say yes to him raise your hand you clap when you see them raising their hands raise, raise your hands high don't be ashamed say yes to jesus yes i'm seeing a hand there god bless you god bless you yes god is touching the hearts of some people here now god is convicting you here now you say apostle i truly want to but i'm ashamed i'm afraid can you forget about shame and raise your right hand i'm raising my hand with you too if you hear his voice today do not harden your heart come to jesus while you can please raise that hand very high please raise that hand very high sing this old song for me just as i am without but please lift your hands if you are lifting it and if your hands are lifted up you want to say yes to jesus please run to the front very quickly run to the front very quickly i want to pray for you celebrate them as they come please run to the front quickly jesus loves you jesus is calling you he's calling you don't be ashamed forget about who is around you and say yes to him you may even be a deacon and elder in church but you know you are not truly born again your heart is not surrendered to him you call the name jesus but you are not one of these please run to the front quickly jesus loves you he's calling you he's calling you to be I'm going to pray for them now but if i'm seeing clearly i'm still seeing two more people joining them wherever you are there's no need to be ashamed jesus wants to make you whole again he wants to make your life new you say apostle but i've lost a lot i've done a lot i don't know if jesus can ever accept me he's the god that can give you a fresh start again wherever you are while i'm praying for them please run to the front quickly if you come after the amen you were not saved so please come now if you can hear the voice of the lord calling you god bless you wherever you are god bless you god bless you god bless you those of you in front put your right hand on your chest and repeat this after me make this prayer from the depths of your heart say lord jesus i surrender to you I repent of my sins I believe that you died and rose again for my sake thank you for saving me therefore I confess that you are my Lord and Savior I receive eternal life thank you for saving me in Jesus name and put those right hands up just lift them up 
Father, I pray for them in the name of Jesus and by the authority of your word, we declare that their sins are forgiven. We declare from today that they are born again. We declare that you are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you because you have washed away their sins. And I ask that you fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them a brand new life with you. Teach them to know you and to serve you. And to walk with you victoriously all the days of their lives. Lord, give them speed in their walk with you. And use them mightily for your glory. In Jesus' name. New Matex, say Amen.